Hey, we're in Advent, the first Sunday of a new Christian year, or the end of, of an old year. Is this an ending, or is this a beginning? I guess it depends on uh, where you're standing uh, as this year changes. And our scripture, as it always is on this Sunday, is Jesus in an apocalyptic mood. Apocalyptic. I know that's something that may make you nervous. Jesus talking about these ending signs and wonders and odd occurrences. Apocalyptics from a Greek word means simply unveiling, revealing. Uh, apocalyptic literature is, uh, makes a lot of mainline Protestant type people like me get nervous uh, when Jesus goes apocalyptic. Uh, so let me say a few things about apocalyptic to get into this scripture. Uh, I want to suggest to you that apocalyptic is not, first of all, a prediction about the future, about what will happen tomorrow, but rather it's a claim about today, about the times in which we live. It's a claim about the precariousness of the present. This temple, Jesus says in the scripture, that looks at once so eternal, so fixed and stable, it is not. It is passing away. This world, uh, this life that often we, we think of as here and shall be here forever and ever, world without end, uh, Jesus says it's precarious, it's moving along, it is ending. There will be a day when there will not be a tomorrow. And uh, as I said, uh, apocalyptic talk like that often makes us nervous. In my wing of mainline liberal Protestant Christianity, uh, we, we prefer our Jesus uh, to be the uh, exemplary moral teacher who goes about and gives us some helpful hints for uh, getting out of bed in the morning and having a nicer day. Or Jesus is the, the sort of spiritual guru who we come on a regular basis. He gives us a little spiritual boost and, and helps us uh, function a bit better in the world we have. Well... First Sunday of Advent, Jesus, Luke 21, uh, is the Jesus who says, be careful, do not put too many eggs in this basket of the present moment, uh, for this is ending. Uh, Jesus, uh, be before you go up to Jerusalem, uh, could you say a few final words for us? And Jesus says, God is going to dismantle all of this. Uh, there won't be stone left upon stone. Uh, Jesus says, God is not only in the creating and constructing business, but in the deconstructing, dismantling business. God is going to end everybody here and everything here. And um, that sounds like fairly bad news about the end. I know at <clears throat> the university where I teach, uh, it, we, we like to see ourselves as sort of helping to uh, help things to endure, adding to the continuity, uh, helping to achieve sort of permanent knowledge. You notice we, we tend to build our universities to look a lot older than they really are, thus giving the illusion, oh, this has been here forever. Uh, I remember, though, as a university student in the 60s, uh, studying Southern history, and our professor, C. Van Woodward, making the casual comment that all American history written before 1960 wasn't just dated, it was wrong. 
it all now had to be rewritten in light of what was happening in America in the 60s. Uh, while we're talking about tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and one thing coming after another, there comes in Jesus with a word that it is possible that there is dramatic destabilization and everything is up for grabs and the thing that you thought were going to be a forever end. Uh, back at uh, Duke University Chapel, <clears throat> I was walking through the vestry one day, taking a student to lunch, and uh, I noticed a student admiring the portraits there on the wall of the former deans of Duke Chapel. There was Dean Clellan and Dean Hickman, and the student was looking at them, and uh, he appeared to be uh, noticing particularly the, the portrait of uh, Dean Frank Hickman. And I said to the student, that uh, Dean Hickman was here during a very important early days of the chapel and was a, known as a wonderful, he was a Quaker too, and, uh, but here he preached in this sort of Methodist uh, chapel. And uh, the student said, uh, that's odd. And I said, what's odd? He said, uh, I said, it's odd that he was a Quaker. And he said, no, it's odd that uh, the label on the portrait says, uh, that's uh, James T. Clellan. And over there, it says, that's Franklin Hickman. And I looked, and some undergraduate miscreant had switched the labels on all the portraits of the deans of the chapel. Um, and nobody had noticed. I said to the students, by the way, if I should drop dead tomorrow, which I might, and if maybe somebody says, you know, we ought to commission a portrait in memory of Dean Willimon, just to, so he can be eternally remembered here. I hope, I want you to tell them, don't bother, he's dead, it's over, he's gone, portrait or no portrait. <laughs> uh, I am God, I make alive, and I kill, the Lord says in Deuteronomy. Elsewhere in one of Paul's letters, he says, God, he quotes God as saying, yeah, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. We like our God to be creative and constructive, but when God goes deconstructive, destructive, well, how do you like that? Uh, I ask a student, uh, how did you decide to come to divinity school? And she said, um, decide is not really the right word. And I said, well, well how did you choose uh, Duke Divinity School uh, to come here? And she said, uh, choose is the wrong word too. Um, she said, I had a good job. In fact, I had a great life until Jesus ripped all that off from me. And I walked off a good paying job. It caused a crisis in my marriage. My kids told me we will never forgive you for moving us to Durham, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, wow. I bet there are people in the congregation this morning that could tell us a thing or two, not only about the gifts of God, but the taking of God. Not only the joy that comes when things are begun by the work of God in your life, but also when things are ended. And Jesus says in this verse, God is there. I'm thinking about the woman who said after her beloved husband died uh, a couple of months later, she said, you know, Pastor, I, I thought my life was over when my husband died. And yet, by the grace of God, I realize it's this ending is in reality my beginning. I've been given a whole new life. Maybe Christians are those who at times of ending, at times of relinquishment, uh, we also lean into asking ourselves, I wonder what God is doing now and what might be being offered. Um, 
down in Honduras <clears throat> with a student mission team. And uh, we were sitting around the campfire one evening with the villagers of the little village of San Marco. And we'd been running a health clinic there all day. And uh, someone had the idea, let's go around the circle and let's share our favorite Bible verse. And that kind of thing always makes Methodists nervous because, you know, somebody always takes John 3.16 and then what do you got? Anyway, uh, we're going around the room and um, one of the students uh, quoted uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and all. And we got to this Honduran woman and through a nurse who was translating for me, this woman said, um, well, you know, one of my favorite verses is Luke 21, I, or maybe it's Luke 20, uh, where Jesus says that God is going to burn all of this up and that all of this will be destroyed. And I just think that's just such a comfort to know that. And I said, uh, did you translate that, her, her words correctly? Comfort? I mean, I thought that was Jesus on a bad day. I, that's comforting? The nurse said, I was talking with this woman today in the clinic. She said, five children, three have died before age three from malnutrition. And I got it. Sometimes the difference between bad news and good news, that is gospel, is where you happen to be standing when you get the news. Jesus comes and says, this world as it is is not what God had in mind. God's going to end everything. Good news or bad news? You make the call.